Hello YouTube, Savage Brewski here. I hope you're having a great and very safe Happy Halloween. I have promised two treats to my followers on Twitter and seeing as I'm getting a lot of questions on these, here's the first of them. So, uh, I've gotten a lot of people saying apparently I know my way around titling videos and thumbnails and I don't honestly think I'm the expert on this by a long shot. I've had videos do really well and some do really badly, but apparently some people think I have this down and uh, just by survey you guys wanted to know how I do it what I think about all that kind of thing so I have this written up and I'm literally going to be reading right off this not quite as a script but I'm going to take you through my thought process my uh, various considerations about making titles and thumbnails for videos on YouTube or Rumble or TikTok or anything else that's basically a video platform this is usable anywhere you would go so uh, I'm also going to have this text available, so if you're the person that likes to read rather than sit here and listen to me, blah, 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 the whole thing, totally fine. Uh, drop your email in the comments. I'll send you a copy of it. Uh, if you're watching this and you're one of my Twitter followers, just tweet at me, send me a DM, whatever, and I'll get this off to you. Anyway, enough screwing around. So uh, I'm breaking this down into five basic parts, okay? Now, the first one is a little bit of preamble. This is just things you need to know being on social media, okay? Things you need to take into consideration being on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or Rumble or any of these platforms, okay? Number one, search algorithms used by social media will change all the friggin' time. There is not and never will be a single one-time winner-take-all wax-on, wax-off to this. There just is never going to be, okay? Sometimes you can jump on a trend that happens to take off based on some keyword or some subject or some video format. That's totally fine. Other times you're going to be doing something totally obscure, something that's known just to your group, your niche, people that you individually know or someone that's into like a small game or a small activity something that's just really not known to everyone in their dog okay that's totally fine at any rate there is no rule there is no fixed idea that's going to stay in place long enough to be used indefinitely this also means you're going to need to be looking out for trends this means you're going to need to be looking into new ideas new things you can come up with there is a bit of work involved but just realize you can have a video come out perfect and you can have the thumbnail and the title exactly where you want them to be depending on what actually happens once you hit publish, it may be a hit, it may not. There is not a way to simply throw everything out that it's going to work all of the time. And that's not on you as the creator at all, okay? It's just going to occur from time to time, so be prepared. Along those lines, a perfectly made video or thumbnail or a title, again, it's to some degree no fault of your own. It's going to perform great or it's gonna perform badly, okay? Here's the deal. The viewers actually determine what the algorithm does. The algorithm being used by your app or by your platform is not the thing making all the calls and decisions, okay? The way these tend to work, and I've watched a lot of videos, I've done a lot of research on this, this is the way it tends to work, okay? You publish a video. It automatically gets a certain amount of impressions. It's put in front of a certain number of screens that then determine whether it's going to see more or see less, okay? Uh, it will get those impressions to show it to a body of viewers and it will try to figure out who should be watching this. It's going to try and figure out what this content is, who it's for, what audience would actually want to view it and put it in front of those guys. And then it watches to see how many people actually open that video, how long they're watching, whether they like or upvote, whether they subscribe, whether they downvote, whether they comment. From there, it'll either take off and the YouTube algorithm or the Rumble algorithm is trying to put this in front of other similar viewers or people like the ones that have already seen it. Or if it's not a very high click-through rate, if it's not a very high response rate, it may just put this on the back burner in favor of other videos, okay? So that first sampling, that first little bit is really what the algorithm is deciding off of. It is not whether it's a good or a bad video at all. You can make a perfect video but if the people that it's shown to don't have the interest in it or they don't watch it or they don't interact with it for very long, despite the fact that many people probably would, YouTube just stops promoting it. And I've seen this happen more than enough times. The other thing about this is, and this is probably the best argument for just continuing to make content. People will take a loss if they have videos not do well for a period of time. There's definitely something they can look at and learn from with that. But I've had videos that I put very little effort into and didn't do all this wizarding and figuring out with 
that are my better performing videos. A perfect example of this, I call it a zombie video because it absolutely refuses to die and it's really rather basic, is my expanding foam rock video, okay? Two things about this. Number one, it's the highest watched video on my channel. At the time of publishing, this thing has almost 10,000 views. Everything else is in the hundreds. Maybe one has like 2,000, I think, but that's about it. That gives you the idea of the range I'm working in, okay? The other thing is, every single time I publish a video, I can watch the impressions and how long they've gone for, and as soon as that video is no longer being promoted, the views start stacking up again on that foam rock video. So don't discount your concepts and just keep making content because you will get videos like that that then draw more people to your channel, draw you a bigger audience, and you never know what that's gonna be. It's your biggest argument to just keep making content and hang in there. Now, here's another thing to think with. Titles and thumbnails are an art form by which I mean they intend to communicate. Okay, if it doesn't say anything to your audience, your audience is not going to talk back to you. They're not going to like, they're not going to comment, they're not going to subscribe, they're not going to stick around. Okay, your title and thumbnail should clearly communicate what the video is about and what it actually has in it. Okay, and the title is doing that with words alone and the thumbnail itself does it in an image format. If you try to be funny or creative and both of these are really not talking to your audience, then they're not going to have any idea what the video is about. Okay, they may or may not click on it to actually understand what it is. It might just be like a mystery sandwich you're handing them. And you have to just hope that they click it because they like you or they're your friend or they have already subscribed or something like that. But to a new viewer, a new person, if they really don't, they may not and you may lose opportunities there. The best combination is, is the title does it and the image does it at the same time and you do this in one shot, okay? Don't worry about keywords too much here because again, search engines being what they are, these will change months after you've actually uploaded your video. If you're worried about someone not being able to find it, that's where hashtags come in. Uh, you can put any number of hashtags in the description of your video and these will actually get flagged by the search algorithm. That will direct some viewers to you. That will help narrow down your audience a little bit. But don't worry as much about if it's not in the title because otherwise you'll be trying to jam in all these words into a title and they can't all fit and they don't all work or help. So just be aware of that. Another thing don't jump on clickbait, okay? You may have this thing like the best thing ever or don't do this or my worst experience. You know, you may have these real clickbaity titles or images, you know, where your thumbnail is you just like freaking out at your camera and just, you know, whatever it is. Again, it's not gonna, you know, communicate as well as something that's actually thought out, reflects what the video is and what it actually contains. So. Uh, to put this in expanse terms, do not donkey balls your thumbnail and title. All right, good. So next thing is you're gonna need to do some homework and homework doesn't always suck. There's a few things you need to do prior to working on your titles and working on your thumbnail that's gonna make this a lot easier. So be a good student and do your homework, okay? First off, determine what you're trying to do with the video. Who is this for? Who is your audience? What is this gonna show? What are you intending to do? Is this video for entertainment or education? Is this commentary? Is this a response to something else you've seen? Is it a response to another video? Uh, if you have a clear idea and an estimation of the purpose of the video, you can determine who it should go to, what it should and shouldn't have a lot more easily, okay? As an example, let's say you're making a video like I've been doing about building model kits, okay? The video is for people that also build model kits, play games, maybe they're into scenics and sculpting, maybe the architects, whatever, but that narrows down already who I'm talking to pretty well. It should have a clear visual in the thumbnail, the thumbnail picture. It should have explanations of the sequence and technique. It should cover what the tools you're using are. Uh, if any of them are less common, it should show you how to use them. The video should show the beginning to end sequence of putting the model together and give the extra attention to the difficult points. And your title and your thumbnail will reflect those point, okay? You want to establish things that are like catchphrases, fonts, textures for the thumbnail, particularly that are signature to you. There's people that use the same font, the same colors, the same layout, like the image is up here, the text is over here, and every single thumbnail they do. You can change this from time to time. You can start making things from scratch. You can change all that stuff up, but typically, viewers will like some familiarity and they'll want to be able to just look and recognize from a thumbnail that this is one of your videos. It really does help. Um, there's a really good example here. The YouTuber's name is Gamza. He used to be Commissar Gamza. He does a lot of stuff with Warhammer and he had a series called Trash Terrain. He was making 
scenery pieces out of leftover scraps of cardboard and drinking cups and things like that. It's a 69 video series. Yes, he chose that for a reason. But every single thumbnail was more or less the same. It had a white background, picture of the terrain piece, the episode number, um, trash terrain, build this thing, name of the piece. And you can see that they all look more or less the same. So you knew what you were watching. If I had to pick something out as a masterclass on that, that's probably what I would pick, honestly. It's just so simple, it works perfectly. And his channel blew up from those kind of things. He really did keep it simple, but it was recognizable and it took off quite well. He's what, 80, 90,000 subscribers now? That's pretty good. Last but not least, and yes, this is part of what I consider homework, is surveying, okay? You wanna get feedback. You wanna hear from the people that are watching your videos. If you're thinking about taking your channel in some direction with new videos or a new concept, see what they think about it, okay? Use polls on the community tab in YouTube. Use your other social media. Use Facebook, use Instagram, use Twitter, whatever you have going, use Reddit and actually put a survey out and say, hey, would you guys like to see blah? Or what would you think of a video about blah? Or should I do blah or blah? Um, the other thing is you'll get comments, you'll get emails. People will, you know, reach out to you in various ways and say, hey, I really like this video. Or, you know, I didn't like this. This didn't do so well. Whatever it is, that kind of feedback is helpful to you as a creator because then you know what's actually making a difference to the people watching your videos versus what's just something in your head or what may make sense to you and doesn't make sense to them okay that's all killer feedback and you really should be paying attention to it another thing about making thumbnails uh particularly more so than titles is there's a ton of free tools or cheap tools that you can use to help make these okay for the most part this is going to be apps and software when you get into making videos, a lot of people tend to think with, you know, there's this idea that you have to have expensive cameras and expensive microphones and top shelf gear before you can start making videos. And it's just absolutely not true. The same thing applies to thumbnails and coming up with titles, okay? You can use very simple apps that help you to do the designing like the three I'm gonna mention here. These are just three that I've come by that have helped me to either get resources or make the thumbnails themselves. First one is Canva, okay? This is my go-to app. Uh, it's a website and an app, so you can use it on a uh, desktop or laptop, or you can do something right from your phone. It's a little bit trickier, but you can do it. You can import images. You can put textures in there. You can put various clip art or images. You can use a good selection of fonts, shapes, paints, colors, effects. Uh, it's very, very simple to use, very intuitive. You do pay a subscription if you want to get some of the higher end features, but you can use a free account. You basically just sign up, you have a login, and it has the basic bare bones of it right there. And for the majority of my videos, that's all I need. I've not really found that I have to do the subscriber only unlock features to do what I'm trying to do. It works really well. I can't recommend this enough. Um, no, they're not paying me to say that, BT dubs. Uh, the next website or app is Pixlr, okay? This is similar to Canva, but it has more sophisticated bells and whistles, and there is a limit to how many things you can create per day or per week on this platform. You can do a lot more sophisticated things with this. This has much more in the way of things like transparent backgrounds or doing color gradient texting or uh, layering different ways, even cutting out images. It can do a lot more than Canva can, but again, you're only gonna have so many things unless you get some sort of a paid service or subscription with it. Again, once in a while, I've used it. It's been something that I'll just thread in here or there. Uh, it's still very, very handy and I'd recommend it to just about anyone. Uh, the last thing is a website called Pixabay. Pixabay is an all comers royalty free website that has images, sounds, uh, stock footage, music, a lot of different things available. So if you're looking for textures, backgrounds, if you want some common still image, memes, even if you get to the point where you're needing music, that's not so much a title and thumbnail thing, but I'm gonna shout it out all the same. This is a very good place to find those and a good resource for anyone to have. So there's tons more out there. There's a lot of different things. I'm sure there's other stock footage websites, stock photo websites, music websites, font websites. There's a ton of other things I can name here, but these really have been the big three when it comes to me designing thumbnails. So that's what I'm sharing with you here. All right. This is the part you've probably all been waiting for. This is my process. This is my how-to of making a thumbnail and a title, okay? From concept to finish. And I'll show you little bits of it where I can here. So step one, start with your homework and develop the idea of what the video is gonna show or tell. Now this can be before you even do the video or after you've done it and you've decided, well, this is what I have in front of me, either way. Spell that out for yourself and work out the various points of any important phrases or terms. Now, at this point, you're just bullet pointing. 
You could literally just go list out the main ideas. For instance, if I were doing a video of building a Space Marine librarian, it would just be build video and Space Marine and librarian. And that would be the way I'd concept it out, okay? At this point, that's more title than thumbnail, okay? Step two, finesse that and work that into a simplified title that actually represents what the video is. Using the example I started above, uh, I'm just gonna use the Space Marine. This could be how to build the Space Marine Librarian or Space Marine Librarian Model Building Tutorial or build your first Space Marine Librarian if I really wanna cater to newer people. Uh, remember, avoid stuff that's like a clickbaity term like the best ever or do this now or never do this again or why blah is blah. It just doesn't communicate what the thing is really. I, I tend to avoid that and the YouTube algorithm doesn't tend to pick up on those too well either. Step three, once the subject and the title are figured out, determine how best to show that with an image, okay? If I'm doing a Space Marine Librarian, I'm going to take a picture of that model, especially if it's a build video. I'm not gonna show you you know, the frame with all the bits on it that doesn't really show what it is. It just looks like a model and you don't know what the heck I'm gonna do with that model. It could be something kinky, you never know. If I'm doing a Space Marine Librarian, I take a picture of the Space Marine Librarian. If I'm building a board, I take a picture of the board. If I'm filming a battle report, I take a picture of the game in progress or show you like an in progress shot. Those would be the kind of things that would communicate what it is visually. So that's what I'm gonna get in an image. Step four, once you have that all figured out, your wording's figured out, your image is taken, you're putting it all together, okay? And this is also where you figure out your finishing touches and your signature bits, your font, your colors, your layout. This is where it all comes together in Canva or whatever app you're using. Um, that's really, a, it's simplified. It sounds very simple because it is very simple. There's nothing else to it. Um, there is no wax on, wax off, as I said, and there's nothing else much more complicated to how I'm doing all that. There's learning your apps and learning your programs and learning the tools at your disposal, even down to things like expanding your vocabulary for titles or learning how to take really good miniature pictures or pictures in general, depending on what you're doing. Yes, you can do all that stuff, but essentially that's all there is to it. The rest is gonna come down to your niche, your field. I know I'm writing this from a miniature gaming perspective, but people will watch this video that have nothing to do with my niche or my hobby and probably take something away from it and it's for them too and just as applicable. Going forward from here, you're gonna have more homework to do. I hate to sound like uh, everyone's favorite teacher, but you will. Remember, you're gonna be on the lookout for trends. You're gonna wanna learn how to use hashtags. You're gonna wanna learn how to do keyword research. This is all gonna help you in the long run. Uh, you're gonna wanna refine your own process for making titles and thumbnails. Uh, this is really just a guide. It's my how-to. It's not necessarily gonna work every step of the way for you. You may have a better process or something that works or makes more sense to you, and you should do that, honestly. Um, another thing that's gonna help, and I'll just throw this out here at this point, is you wanna learn about things like using playlists or using end cards or end screens. These tie videos together pretty well and typically because YouTube really likes people that watch the same video or similar videos or stay watching longer, playlists are a good idea. If you have five of the same kind of video or a similar concept or a similar chain of videos, make them into a playlist. Um, really can't hurt you. Same thing with end cards, asking your viewers to watch another video even if it's not playlisted or to subscribe to your channel or to leave a like or leave a comment. These kind of things are all helpful to growing your audience and growing your viewership, so why not use them? These are all the kinds of things you should be learning about as you go. And it's not necessarily gonna be one video that teaches them all. It's gonna be something that you get over time and that I've gotten over time, so. Just hang in there and have an open mind and be willing to take in new stuff. Anyway, that is my guide. Again, this is in writing. If you'd rather read it than listen to me talk about it for however many minutes I've been rolling here. If this was helpful, please do leave a like, comment anything that you have a question on or something that you liked or even something you disliked in the video. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe. Catch you on the next one. Stay savage and happy Halloween.